The Ministry of Environment, Forests and Climate Change coordinates and oversees the implementation of India's environmental and forestry policies and programs. Its primary concern relates to conservation of India's natural resources, including its lakes, rivers, biodiversity, forests and wildlife, besides prevention and abatement of pollution. The overarching guiding factor is the principle of sustainable development and the welfare of human beings. Thus, the broad objectives may be categorized as environment protection and forest conservation, conserving and protecting biodiversity, facilitating sustainable development, mainstreaming environmental concerns in development, and ensuring a transparent and objective regulatory mechanism. Several legislative and regulatory measures are in place to achieve these objectives. India has a long-standing track record of national and international effort to protect its environment while achieving sustainable development. In the recent past, a fresh impetus has been given to the ministry's policies and programs and the results are encouraging. The focus has been sharpened to achieve the objectives. The processes have been simplified to ensure transparency while avoiding delay. Innovative practices are fostered with the state-of-the-art technology. As a developing country, India is poised to take on the challenge of conserving its natural resources while addressing the developmental agenda. Let us have a glimpse of these important recent initiatives. Environmental protection including emission norms made more stringent for cement industry, real-time monitoring of Ganga water quality, online submission of EC applications from July 2014 for transparency. More power to state-level environment assessment authorities from 25th of June 2014. Guidelines issued on CSR during project appraisal for EC. Biodiversity conservation. India is one of the mega biodiversity countries associated with traditional knowledge. With only 2.4% of land area, it accounts for 7 to 8% of recorded species, while supporting 18% of human and 18% of cattle population. India is party to the Convention on Biological Diversity, the CBD which is one of the agreements adopted during the Rio Earth Summit held in 1992, having hosted the COP11 to the CBD in 2012. At Hyderabad, India is currently the president of COP. With India's facilitation, the Nagoya Biodiversity Protocol has been ratified by over 50 countries in July 2014. To conserve and sustainably use the coastal and marine biodiversity, an Indo-German technical cooperation is ongoing. A project will be implemented in as many as five states, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Karnataka, Goa and Tamil Nadu, with objectives for capacity building, establishment of interpretation centers site-specific problem-solving pilot projects and targeted research projects to assist policy decision-making in various areas of coastal and marine biodiversity. The Ministry has also taken steps for the TEEB India initiative with donor assistance. TEEB is the acronym for the Economics of Ecosystems and Biodiversity, initiated by the G8 and five major developing economies. An externally aided project is on for conserving biodiversity for livelihood improvement. To address the impacts of climate change, 
coordination with basic countries for firming up agenda on climate change for COP21 to safeguard the interest of developing countries. Further to this, Rs 100 crore has been allocated for the National Adaptation Plan for boosting climate action at local level. Forest conservation. Pristine forests are important ecologically. Parameters have been formulated for identifying pristine forest areas with a view to conserve them. This would be based on country-wide GIS layers, forest cover, forest type, biological richness and landscape integrity, besides layers relating to wildlife and hydrological values. A GIS-based decision support system has been developed through the Forest Survey of India to provide information without delay for deciding forest clearances. Innovative technology has been developed for rehabilitating degraded ecosystems. The Center for Environmental Management of Degraded Ecosystems, University of Delhi, is a center of excellence supported by the ministry, which has demonstrated successful rehabilitation of mined areas, decertified landscapes, and eradication of invasive alien weeds like lantana. Wildlife Conservation India has 670 protected areas covering around 4.8% geographical areas. There are 102 national parks, 517 wildlife sanctuaries, 47 conservation reserves and 4 community reserves in the country. We have more than 50% of the world's wild tigers and a large population of Asiatic elephants and rhinos. Over the years, the project tiger coverage is increased spanning over 18 of our states, covering more than 2% of our geographical area. The Boar Tiger Reserve in Maharashtra is a recent addition to the project tiger, becoming its 47th reserve. To strengthen field protection, special tiger protection force have been approved for two tiger reserves, namely Navegaon, Nagzira and Melghat. The NRSA has been collaborated for flood, fire alerts in tiger reserves. Initiatives like electronic surveillance using thermal and infrared cameras, voluntary relocation of villages from core areas addressing human-tiger conflicts are underway to strengthen tiger conservation. The country-level assessment of tiger is ongoing. Jointly with Nepal, the Terai Ark landscape has been assessed for tiger status. The National Tiger Conservation Authority and the Wildlife Crime Control Bureau would collaborate through a management information system to tackle tiger and wildlife crime in tiger reserves. Each reserve would carry out its assessment for management effectiveness annually. Fostering Development the Sustainable Development Agenda has been duly addressed to avoid delay while ensuring transparency in regulating processes of the Ministry, keeping in mind the environmental concerns. This is important for economic growth. An important step in this direction has been the online filing and monitoring of forests and environment clearances. The environmental impact assessment has been decentralized and EC requirements for industrial sheds have been streamlined. Process for linear projects have been made simpler, keeping in mind the interests of the nation. A general approval has been given for forest clearances in strategic road projects in border areas. This would avoid delay in referring the matter to the center. The coal mining expansion project, up to 6 million tons per year, has been streamlined and a standard TOR is now available for coal washery projects. The regional offices of the ministry have been delegated to deal with smaller projects, up to 40 hectares. 
This centralization has further reduced their delay. Communication and development is important in the areas affected by left-wing extremism. Hence, a general approval for development of road has been given in such areas. To facilitate electric transmission and irrigation, the dispensation of compensatory afforestation on double the degraded forest land has been extended to such projects almost 35,000 crores from the Compensatory Afforestation Fund Management and Planning Authority, CAMPA, is being provided to states with a scheme being ready for their use. Conservation is not a drag on development. Development can happen sustainably without compromising conservation. We are committed to both.